So we found for a source moving towards an observer, the perceived frequency was equal to the true frequency of the source times the ratio of the velocity of sound, the speed of sound, over the speed of sound minus the speed of the source. Okay. We also found that the perceived frequency for an observer moving towards a stationary source was equal to the true frequency of the source times the velocity of sound plus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity of sound. Okay. And I want to note that suppose there the you know you might say that if the source is moving towards me at 25 meters per second and um, or I'm moving towards the source at 25 meters per second, I should get the same perceived frequency. But if you plug in 25 meters per second here versus 25 pre meters per second here and the other variables are, are, the, are held the same, you will get different perceived frequencies. And that may seem like, hey, that just doesn't make sense. But what's cool about it is these are different for different physical reasons. We, when we're deriving this one, we found that the perceived wavelength changed. It was the V minus Vs over the true frequency. Okay, That was our, our perceived frequency. That's what changed. There was actually less air molecules between wave fronts in the case of the source moving towards the observer. Whereas in the case over here, we had a different perceived speed. There was the same amount of air molecules between wave fronts, whether or not the observer was moving or stationary. So it was the speed that was perceived as different. Okay, and that was equal to the uh, speed of the sound moving plus the speed of the observer. Okay. So the wavelength is what was perceived different for the source moving towards the observer. The wavelengths got compressed, less air molecules in between wave fronts, whereas in this case that the wave the wavelength was not compressed, but we moved into it faster, so it appeared to be traveling faster. So we can combine both those physical ideas together into one one relationship and say our perceived frequency should be equal to our perceived velocity over our perceived wavelength. And in doing so, we'd have this the result of the change the, per, the changed uh, velocity or perceived velocity divided by this the result of the perceived wavelength change. Okay. And that F would be in the denominator of the denominator, which gets flipped up here. And that's a nice, succinct way of taking into account all possibilities. So if the observer is not moving, this becomes zero, and I get this. If the source isn't moving, then this becomes zero, and I get this. But now I can take into account both both source and observer moving. So I could have two trains that are traveling towards each other and one of them lets the whistle go. And you could calculate, well, what's the perceived frequency by an observer on the other train? Or we could have them both those trains moving apart. Or you can have one moving towards the other, but the other moving away. So our conventions about whether this and this are positive still hold. If the observer is approaching the source, whether or not the source is approaching the observer, then this is positive, otherwise this is negative. And same thing here. If the source is approaching the observer, whether or not the observer is approaching the source, this is positive. Now this minus sign stays there. And so if the source is approaching the observer, this would be positive. I'd have a neg minus a positive number. So B minus a positive number. If this was ne um, uh, receding, I'd have V plus a negative number. Okay, so the, these algebraic signs stay here no matter what, and then these variables can take positive or negative values based on if they are approaching the other or receding from the other. Now overall, if the distance between the objects is getting smaller, 
then that means the perceived frequency ought to be higher than the true frequency. And if the distance between the two objects is overall getting bigger, then the perceived frequency should be getting smaller. So in each of these three cases, that um, does make sense from if you've ever experienced an ambulance coming up behind you, you pull over and then it travels away from you. Okay? If, if uh, something is coming closer to you, the frequency is perceived as higher than, than the true frequency. And if it's moving away from you, the frequency is perceived as lower. Okay? And the, the same is true in all three of these cases.